What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to LTH. My name is Abe and if you don't want to stay here through this intro, please click the timestamps down below in our comments and it will get right to the install. But that being said, if you are here just to create a Proxmox cluster, this can be a standalone video. If you're following our course, as you can see on the screen, awesome. Welcome back to another episode. We're going to be covering creating a Proxmox cluster. Clusters allow you to manage multiple Proxmox nodes from a single interface, enable manual migration of VMs and containers between nodes, but it does not automatically provide failover or resource management. That will be covered in another video. This and the benefit of a cluster in general is, hey, let's say you need to take a machine offline or you need to update it, but you can't have your services go down. Live migrate them to the other machine and then you can update that machine, reboot it, and move virtual machines back to it to balance out your workload. But as you can see right here, we're essentially gonna create the cluster in this series or this video. The next video we'll create up we will create our Zeph pool. And the third video, we will move the VMs to the Zeph pool and show you live migration. I'm keeping it in three videos to keep the video short and concise. It also helps with SEO and when people Google information if they're looking for a specific topic, that also benefits us. with copyable commands and step-by-step -step instructions. If you ever get confused while following this video, please, please go click that down below. So I have two machines here. The white machine is our original box, okay? And the second node is a node that we have now added. So if you have not done so and you're following this course, you need to go and install Proxmox on another machine and then connect that to your network so we can cluster these together. Remember, if you don't remember how to do that, episode four, Proxmox install covers that. So another note, the machine that you are connecting to your cluster cannot have virtual machines on it. It will like create stability issues. It can uh, make you lose your data, whatever else, right? So just be very careful that you're not connecting a machine with virtual machines already to it, to your original node okay so that is a big thing to do so what we need to do is we need to click on data center on the machine that already has vms on it okay and then we're going to click cluster and we're going to click create a cluster and we are going to name this whatever so i'm going to name it lth cluster just like that okay and then the node ip is the ip of the node you are currently on found in your url bar which is up here and we can see that it is already accurate. And then we're gonna click uh, create. And then once this is created, it pretty much creates this uh, Coro sync configuration file that allows you to do this. And then we get a task okay, click exit. And then there is this join information button right up here. And we're gonna click copy this information, okay? And so after we do that, we need to log in to our second machine, which I have already done, go to our data center once again. And then from our data center tab, we're gonna click cluster. And we can see that we do not have a cluster yet, but we can click join cluster right here, paste that uh, code, right? The uh, join information code. And then in here, we just need to do the peer address and the root password. So the peer address, it already knows based on this join information. So it grabbed it, 238. The peer's root password, whatever is on that other machine, you need to type in here. And then the cluster network is going to now be the IP of the machine you're currently on. So whenever you're setting this up, you're always pretty much self-assigning the IP of the machine you're on and your peer's link address is put right there. Okay, and then you can click join cluster. We can see login succeeded, requesting addition of this node. And in a minute, this will work out just fine. So this will pretty much uh, sit like this, don't worry about that. And then you can click this and it'll say like permission denied, invalid PVE ticket. It may say that, wait a second, reload your browser, log back in, and now you are in just like this. 
and now we can see our nodes are connected. So we could, in an off state, potentially move virtual machines between these two nodes, but we can't do live migration without a Zeph uh, backup, a Zeph storage, right? To give us that high availability of our data. But that's it for this video. That is how you connect both of your machines together. Please stay tuned for the following video on how to set up a Zeph cluster and then move those virtual machines and do those live migrations. My name is Abe. Thank you for watching and I'm signing off with another video.